What is it, darling? Is something wrong? I, uh... I don't like what we did. <laughs> well, I have had more flattering reviews. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to... I mean, it was wrong for us to risk our lives for no reason when there's people out there doing it because they have to. For all of us. Do you mean people? Or are you thinking of one person in particular? I mean people. These are, are what you're looking for. Six of them, the first two in each row. On the underside, when you pull them out, you see this strip of lead? And the ones you're replacing them with of copper in place of the lead. Which means that we can burn out that whole installation with a single surge of power, any time we choose. And I couldn't repair the damage in under 48 hours. I'm sure the lights won't go out or anything when I make the switch. Are those fuses control only the gun turret motors and the shell hoists? The whole thing shouldn't take more than three minutes. Three minutes? The officer's mess is right next door, people going in and out the whole time. Can't you shut the door? There is no door. I must leave you. I can't be here way too long. Good luck, mademoiselle. Have any of you seen him this morning? You, didn't I see you talking to Lieutenant Metz down here the other day? Sir, I don't know which of the officers is Lieutenant Metz. He says he knows you. Says he met you in a train. Yes, yes, he's a nice man. Yes, I know him. You seen him lately? No, except here the other day. Have you been out with him? No, I have a fiancé. I couldn't possibly go out with someone I just met. All right. All right.
How about a cup of coffee? I'm making some fresh. Thanks, I'll be right in. I've got a little kitchen in the back. Just knock. I'll be waiting. And we can take all the time we like. <laughs> Wicked man, wicked, wicked, wicked. Yes, but you get to like me. Maybe. But now I have work to do. I'll be waiting. I'll be there. Coming. Stop. I can't. They're on to us. I must finish. Catherine. Wait. You've got us. It's too late. They've got the wrong house. Get out of here. Don't worry, we have a contact. When did this come through? I just received it. The transmission was garbled, obviously in haste. All we know is they've somehow arranged to sabotage those guns in Calais. We have to bring her out. We need to know everything in detail. Is there a problem with that? I'm not sure. She's obviously lost her radio. All we can do is wait until she makes contact by some other means. cousin from Poitiers. Anything you say to René, you can say to me. You understand? No, I can find some bait. We don't sell it. Have you tried the cafe commerce? I have commissions for London in here. How soon can I get it out? I don't know. I just passed them on. It's important. Satisfactory. Just as we predicted, they're going to deliver this invasion right into our lap.
This is my hiding place. Why didn't you bring me here last time? <laughs> it's against the orders. Oh, yes. Last time we were following orders, weren't we? <laughs> well, up to a point. Do you want to tell me about Kelly? No, not yet. Just hold me. Oh, I was so afraid I'd never see you again. I don't even know your name. It doesn't matter. When this war is over... Don't. Don't talk about the future, not now. Why not? It frightens me. We don't know what will happen, where we'll be, if we'll even find each other. I will find you. Somehow. Maybe we'll be different people then. No. But we all change. This war, I never thought... Neither of us could have imagined being here, living secret lives. But we are here, so we are meant to be, you and I. What do you believe? I believe that we're a lovely, happy accident. That's all. If we're meant to be, don't send me back to England. Let me stay here. <laughs> you know, that isn't Think possible. of how much I could help you. Don't. I could look after you, make sure you didn't get into I any can't. trouble. I'm much more useful over here than that. She thinks I'm arranging her flight to England. Did you find out what she's carrying? All I know is it's a sabotage plan of some kind. But well, can't you get them away from her? It's difficult. Well, long enough to photograph her. Not without arousing her suspicions. <sighs> then let us examine our priorities. The crucial decision about the invasion will not be made in France and then pass back to England. It will happen the other way around. Till then, London must not suspect how many of their secrets we already know. Not if they are to reveal the vital one. That's true. Thank you. Your people have plans to derail trains and uh, blow up targets all over France. Most of this we already know. And what we don't know is unimportant compared to the prize we're playing for, the when and the where of the Allied attack. So I send her back. Mm. Oh, this... This must make you very happy. I'm sorry? That she's not to be arrested. Well, she's very beautiful, is she not? Yes, very. And good in bed. Oh. Don't tell me you're in love with her. She is, as you say, very beautiful. I'm almost tempted to arrest her just to have her brought here to try for myself. What would you think of that? <laughs> I would think that our Oberson van Führer had very good taste. But I already know that. <laughs> Don't worry, my dear Paul. I'm only teasing you. <laughs> Go back and enjoy her while you can. We must all take what pleasures we can in time of war. <laughs> even from the enemy. Tomorrow night. I pray for me, for both of us. On Fall from Grace. Please, I need that. I've been asked to authorize this man's execution. The leadership of the resistance sees you as a traitor. If we lose the battle to deceive the enemy as to the time and place of the invasion, then we lose the war. This is 17th century Chinese porcelain. Once destroyed, it can't be replaced. It will be gone forever, like your beauty. 
Don't make me do the same to you. One more life to save millions. Fall from Grace concludes tomorrow night on Sky One. So don't miss tomorrow night's stunning conclusion at 8 o'clock. Now we have two premieres for you, Olivier Olivier on Sky Movies and on the movie channel One False Move, both starting at 10. Starting at 10 here on Sky One, the morning after the night before proves to be a testing time for Joe and Jake in Melrose Place. Satellite Network, this is Sky One with the conclusion of Fall from Grace. Last night on Fall from Grace. Somebody, please, help me! You have to convince Hitler and his generals the biggest lie in history. Our attack is not going by Normandy, but in the north. they're caught they talk everybody talks under torture when i return you will tell me how to use this new code that we found in your belongings it is <gasps> try to remember your name damn it you haven't seen me for six months you're almost crazy for missing me you have come with the most difficult task i can imagine the lindemann battery and now, the conclusion of Fall from Grace. Grace? My place. She thinks I'm arranging a flight to England. Did you find out what she's carrying? All I know is it's sabotage plans of some kind. But well, can't you get them away from her? It's difficult. But just long enough to photograph them. Not without arousing her suspicions. Well then, let's examine our priorities. The crucial decision about the invasion will not be made in France and then passed back to England. It'll happen the other way around. Until then, London must not suspect how many of their secrets we already listened to. Not if they are to reveal the vital one. That's true. Thank you. Your people have plans to derail trains and blow up targets all over France. Now, most of this we already know, but what we don't know, it's unimportant compared to the prize we're playing for. The when and the where of the Allied attack. So I send her back. Hmm. Well, this, this must make you very happy. I'm sorry? That she's not to be arrested. She's very beautiful, is she not? Yes, very. And good in bed? Oh, don't tell me you're in love with her. She is, as you say, very beautiful. I'm almost tempted to arrest her, just to have her brought here to try for myself. What would you think of that? Hmm? I would think that Herr Oberson van Führer had very good taste. But I already know that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't 
worry, my dear Paul. I'm only teasing you. Go back and enjoy while you can. We must all take what pleasures we can in time of war. <laughs> Even from the enemy. Should you have this? Oh, it's lovely. Thank you. It was my mother. If she were alive, she would want you to have it. Because, because you have made me happy. I'll always wear it. I love you. Oh my God, the radio. That is the end of the news. There now follows tonight's messages. Now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of the party. Behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Angelica awaits her stranger in the Rose Garden. The night has a thousand eyes. That's a confirmation. They have taken her from England. Come on, we must start out. Goodbye, my darling. Take care. Broke every speed limit getting here. And got away with it. What else is the uniform good for? Come in. Squiff, good to see you. And Major O'Neill. No need to introduce you to Miss Fradier. God, you're safe. So good to see you. Miss Pradier, I'm Henry Ridley. The Joint Intelligence Committee was so impressed by your debriefing that I wanted to congratulate you personally. Thank you, sir. The plans you brought back for sabotaging the Lindemann battery were first rate. You will undoubtedly receive a decoration for your courage in switching those fuses. There are people over there taking far greater risks than that every day of their lives. And we do not forget them. But for you, it's over. And we're glad to have you back. Tom has come to take you back to London. We've arranged somewhere for you to stay for as long as you need it. Thank you, sir. I want you to know that I'm ready to go back any time I can be of use. You didn't have to say that, you know. What? That you go back. Nothing is so bad the second time. You could be pushing your luck. There's still a war to win. We all push our luck. Yeah. Except for some of us who just push paper and polish chairs with our backsides. Don't blame yourself because you're not in action. We have to do what we're best at wherever we can be most useful. too fast. Please stop. Tom, stop the car now. I haven't done what I have just to be killed in some stupid accident for no reason.
I'm sorry, that was stupid. Forgive me. I'm still in love with you. I thought I'd never see you again, and now that I have, I don't want to lose you. Marry me. I can't. Things have changed since we last saw each other. I don't care. It wouldn't work. I'm sorry. Captain, what happened over there? I have to know. I need to understand. I'm not even sure I understand it myself. If I did. What? I was going to say, if I did, I'd tell you. But how can we know if? Coffee, please. Two agents coming in tonight. Our crew name is Suzanne and Anatole. They are new to me. I have no idea where they are going after I hand them over in Paris. It's not important. What matters is that they keep on sending out these courier packs through you. Who they are is immaterial. What they know is vital. You say another one's going on tonight? name Ajax. All I know is he has been somewhere in Paris. You're doing a fine job, Paul. Win or lose, Germany will take care of those who fought with us. This is the first time I've heard you mention losing hands. Until this invasion is defeated, things could go either way. I want you to know that if necessary, you'll be got out given a new identity and enough money to start over again. Things are in place in Switzerland, the South America, even the Vatican. Loyalty to the right does not go unrewarded. What's the matter with you, Hans? You remember how we used to talk when we were in Berlin before the war? Hello. I know. You were already in the party. I was working in that aircraft factory. But we both knew what the real danger is. If the Reich falls, it's not the British or the Americans, not even the Jews, who will win. I know. It's the communists. You're right, of course, Paul. How strange that you should have to remind me. I don't have to. You're tired, Hans. That's all. Yes, of course, that's all. Call me when you get back from office. Of course. Straight to Cavendish.
afraid there's no doubt about it. Every one of them's been photographed. This is terrible. You won't see anything with the naked eye. It's a trick the lab dreamt up. By applying one of their chemicals, they can tell whether or not they've been exposed to an intense light. The only reason for which could be to photograph them. How long have your people suspected this poor character? There's been an accumulation of things over the past few months. Now he's even been followed to meetings with Strommelberg, so there can't be any doubt about it. This means our whole network is wide open. I've been asked to authorize this man's execution. I don't like the idea, but frankly, I don't see an alternative. On the face of it, I agree. But I'd like to think about it. God knows how many of our people he's condemned to death already. Yes, yes. An eye for an eye, etc. But the fact is that this fellow hasn't enough eyes, limbs, lies, or anything else to pay for what he's done. But I need to know what he's done. How much damage? Where? How much they know over there? How much they don't? It's essential we find that out before we do anything. So, what do you propose? Get him over here. We'll dream up some story without letting him know he's under suspicion. With the right kind of questioning, he'll tell us everything, not know he's doing it. Then we'll decide. As you know, I monitor all of Paul's radio communications with London. He just received this order. I call you back. If they suspect something, you'll be walking into a trap. But if you refuse to go, that's as good as a confession. It's a nice dilemma. So, what do you want me to do? I won't force you to go. I'm afraid for you. And yet... If I don't go, as you say, they will realize that I have betrayed them. I will be off no further use to you. And the war is not yet won. Therefore, I have no choice. I must take the risk. You're a brave man, Paul. Come back safely. Who knows? I may even pick up something useful while I'm there. Oh, Ajax. <laughs> Good to see you. This is Major O'Neill, US Army. Glad to know you, Paul. My pleasure, Major. With my compliments to the boys in the mess. It's uh, the last of the 29. Cars over here. to meet someone I've heard so much about. Everyone tells me that you're doing a wonderful job over there, Paul. Naturally, our first reaction in hearing that is to figure out some way of having you do twice as much work in future. <laughs> Don't worry. That's just my little joke. Now, the reason we brought you over, Paul, is to ask you a few questions face to face. You see, we have some thoughts on the way we might reorganize some things over there. But we want to hear your thought. What you think? What'd you make of him, Colonel? He's clever as hell. I'm very proud of himself. So what next? Well, I need to think a while. Take him up to London, book him into that little hotel we use off Park Lane. Keep him happy. Keep an eye on him. Interesting man, your colonel. Do you know him well? Hardly at all. I only work with him. <laughs> that is very English. You work with him, but you hardly know him. How long have you been over here? Six months. Tom, 
I have a very big favor I would like to ask you. I don't know if you can help me, but... Um, Go ahead. Well, there is an agent. She came back here from France only recently, and she and I... Uh, she and I... <laughs> we became... Well, um, I would very much like to see her, if that is possible. But I only know her code name. It is Denise. Well, that could be a tough one, Paul. I, uh, I really don't think that's going to be possible. Would you at least ask your colonel for me? I'll ask him, but uh, I can't promise anything. Something must have happened. Oh, Tom, for heaven's sakes, they both survived occupied France. So I'm sure they can make it across London in a blackout. I have to make a phone call. Tom, I'm terribly sorry. It was my fault. It's all right. You're, uh, you're here. Darling, this is Catherine Pradier and Paul Lemire. How do you do? Uh, well, sit down. I've been looking forward to meeting you so much. <laughs> me too. Uh, forgive me, but that is quite exquisite. A gift. Wow. What excellent taste. Watch me leave. I'm afraid I'll never see you again. You'll see me again. I promise. Don't make promises you can't keep. <laughs> then we'll make a date instead. The 1st of September at 1 o'clock at Fouquet's on the Champs Elysees. It's not a joke. We'll have... I know the danger you're in. It's all I can think about. Oh, go up. You don't love. My darling, listen. Listen, please. I pray for me, for both of us. Please, I need that.
Why are we here? Orders. Who's orders? There hasn't been much opportunity. What with one thing and another. Thank you for letting me see Catherine. Never say the English have no romance in their souls. <laughs> Did I ever say that? Often. <laughs> <laughs> Things never turn out the way one expects, do they? My biggest fear was always that Stromelberg would somehow realize you'd been planted on him in Berlin before the war. Instead, it's Ajax, one of our own agents, who starts suspecting you. Oh. Couldn't you have warned him off? Not without risking your cover. Whatever happens, you must keep Stromelberg's confidence. Are you sure he suspects nothing? As sure as I can be. Good. But I'm afraid that from now on, things are going to be more dangerous for you than ever. The leadership of the Resistance sees you as a traitor. They've been ordered to leave you alone, but be careful. What about new agents coming in? Well, if they know anything, it'll only be what Cavendish knows. That way, if they're picked up and made to talk, they can't endanger you with Stromelberg. Who else knows I'm working for you, except you? There's a document with the Joint Chiefs. If anything happens to me, you're covered. And uh, the American, O'Neill, does he know? No. Don't you trust him? Oh, I trust him, but there's no need for him to know. There is something important you should know. I'm fairly sure the little radio is turned. Stromelberg seems to know everything that goes through there. I was beginning to suspect, but it's good to be sure. Look, here's something for you. We've established a safe radio in Paris. It's for emergencies only. But if you ever need it, this is where you go. Say the colonel sent you. Right. Good luck, Paul. Take care. All the evidence we have, including the messages that the Americans are still intercepting from the Japanese ambassador in Berlin to Tokyo, shows that Hitler himself remains convinced that the invasion will come on the Normandy beaches rather than Calais. It is also clear that an increasing number of his generals are coming to agree with him. Gentlemen, if we lose the battle to deceive the enemy as to the time and place of the invasion, then we lose the war. Despite the success of Ultra in intercepting German communications, despite the vital roles played and still to be played by double agents such as Brutus and Garbo, the odds remain starkly against us. Colonel Ridley, if you have any last asset, any last card up your sleeve, now's the time to play it. It's a plan that I've prayed daily I shall never be obliged to use. Even now, I can only wish it had never come into my mind. There it is. I cannot ignore it. And I have no other to put in its place. What is this plan, Squiff? Believe me, if I told you, you wouldn't thank me for it. It's all right, Squiff, I understand. You're under more pressure than any one man should be asked to bear. I know you'll do what you have to. Hello. Come in. Morning, Miss Pratty. Um, we're through here. Won't you sit down, Colonel Ridley? Thank you, no. I have one question only to ask you. What may that be? 
Are you still willing to return to France? To Calais? Yes. When? As soon as I can make the arrangements. I hadn't been expecting this quite so soon. It's a matter simply of delivering a message, but a message of vital importance to the invasion. Of course I will go. Thank you. I felt sure I could count on you. My car will pick you up here tomorrow. Until then, carry on exactly as you would have done. Do not change your plans. Above all, tell no one that we have spoken or that you're about to go away. No one at all. You understand? Of course. Until tomorrow, ma'am. And thank you, Miss Pradier. Please forgive this interruption, but this was just picked up by our radio in Lille, in London to Aristide, in Calais, most urgent. Just as we planned, they're delivering the evasion right into our hands. Has the message gone through to Calais? By the usual route. They have no reason to suspect that we know anything. Good night, Carissa. Thank you. Thank you for a wonderful evening. Oh, darling. Oh, my goodness. You don't have pierced ears. No, I'm far too cowardly. Hey, voila, my dear. Thank you, Neville. Catherine, they're divine. Another gift. No, I bought them in Paris before the war. Little jewelers I'm taking to when it's all over. Just the thought of being able to go to Paris again is so wonderful. Oh, I remember the last time you were there. <laughs> Good night. William, take care of yourself, sir. All right, take care. Thanks for coming. Good night, Kat. We'll, uh, we'll call you tomorrow. Maybe we can arrange something for this weekend. That would be lovely. Thanks again. Good night. Mm. Thank you. Charles, Tom, don't worry, we'll look after. Sabotage plan approved. An execution will be ordered via BBC code phrases you suggest. Stop. Courier returning via Lysander June 4th, bringing strictest instructions on timing of operation. Stop. Timing of action is essential. Repeat, essential. Stop. Vital you follow timing instructions with greatest care. Stop. Congratulations and good hunting. 
gentlemen. This is the most important message of the war. The invasion is imminent. And it will be here, in Calais. We won't let them down. You have another flight tomorrow night? Yes. My dear Paul, as I'm sure you know, I would never do anything to put you at unnecessary risk, but I'm afraid that this time, I must take your passenger. <laughs> I understand. Hmm. Well, naturally, I'll do everything I can to protect you from the suspicions of the Allies and your friends in the Resistance, but... I must have this one. Of course. Obviously, it's important. <laughs> Are you meeting the plane yourself? No, I wasn't planning to. Unless you want me to. No, no, no. Change nothing. I'm going down simply to escort the agent back to Paris. That's all. Good. Do everything as usual. After Paris, we'll take over. Indeed, madame, and the pleasure, I'm sure, will be entirely mine. Is there any particular kind of pleasure that appeals to you? Big girls? Small girls? Two girls? Three girls? There is one girl, I believe, whose name is Andrea. Do you have a name? It doesn't matter. The colonel sent me. <laughs> what colonel? I know a lot of colonels. Quite a few generals, too. So, what's so special about your colonel? Ridley. Colonel Ridley. This had better be an emergency. It is. How soon can I get a message to London? I'm not due to radio until tomorrow. What time? Ten. It's vital that this goes. Give it to me. Now, sit over there and be quiet for 20 minutes. While I stretch out and close my eyes, I'm exhausted. Mm. You make a nice change from Germans and collaborators. Your niece, Sir Henry. Thank you. Morning, my dear. Some coffee? Yes, thank you. Well, what happened? I listened very hard all evening, and I'm sure nothing was said between Catherine and Tom outside of social chit-chat. Nothing involving you, your department, or invasion plans. I didn't doubt it, but I had to be sure. Thank you, my dear. What are you up to, Uncle? No, Deirdre. Sorry, Uncle. You can't blame me for trying. beautiful house. 
I hardly get down here anymore since my wife died, but I still can't bring myself to part with it. I'm not surprised. It isn't just the memories. In a strange way, just knowing it's here is almost more important than being here. That doesn't sound too absurd. No, I can understand that. Why don't you settle in your room? Then we'll talk. There's a call for you, Sir Henry. Urgent, they said. I'll take it in my study, Millie. Show Miss Pradier to her room. This way, miss. I do hope that you had a pleasant journey on the way down here. Yes, it was lovely. Oh, Thank good. You. I am glad. But it's a long time here. <laughs> this is Ridley. My car is about time. Tom, how did you find me here? With the reluctant cooperation of the Joint Chiefs Secretariat. Well done. Getting any cooperation from them, reluctant or otherwise, is an historic first. I have a message for you that came priority one at 10.20 this morning from someone identified only as R3, which I gather means something to you. What does it say? Essential, you cancel. Repeat, cancel incoming agent on flight Tango 4. Stop. Agent safety compromised. Arrest certain. Repeat, certain. Stop. R3. Message ends. Thank you, Tom. Message noted. And again, well done. Our experts have been over the plan you brought back for sabotaging the Lindemann battery, and it's first rate. We can't improve on it. The problem is, however, that we cannot be certain that the guns will be wholly out of action for much more than 12, at best 24 hours, which makes the timing of the whole operation crucial. These are Millie's wartime Eccles cakes. Quite remarkable, given the restriction on ingredients. It's pretty. As you will appreciate, there is no knowledge more valuable to the enemy than the knowledge of when and where the Allies will attempt to invade France. That is something known only to a very small group of people at the highest Allied level. You are about to share in that knowledge. The information that you will be carrying to Calais bears directly upon the plans for invasion. Anyone in possession of that information will be able to unravel the whole when and where of that invasion. Such knowledge would guarantee victory for the enemy. Miss Preddy, I think it's only right, now that you know what your mission entails, that you should have the chance to reconsider your decision. Have you any reason to think I'll be arrested? None. That is no more than usually. Then when do I leave? Tonight. Your clothes are upstairs. Millie will help you change. I have your documents. Still no answer. She never said anything about going away. Did she say anything to you? Perhaps something came up. Thank you. Here's your microfilm, miss. A little U-shape under the head. Can I have your shoe, miss? You know where this goes. A few seconds missing, it's all over. Heaven forbid, but should you for any reason fall into the enemy's hands? I know, Colonel, but I would rather, if you don't mind, not talk about it. Good luck, Miss Pradier. No man or woman has ever done that country greater service.
It's only me, Anna. Did George and Robert meet up then, all right? Oh. She's in there. Who? The one they brought. Message, what's the matter? I warned them it was dangerous. <sighs> I have to get to Calais. Yes, of course, we'll get you there. Oh. is everywhere. The countryside is crawling with them. There must be something we can do. There's no way out. Do you not trust Paul? I trust him as I trust every man, until he betrays me. But why not arrest her now? Why wait? Because if we let her get to Calais, we'll get them all. And it's often easier to break the will of many than of one alone. 
Believe me, Doctor, we have no time to waste. This is the quickest way. Oh, Tom. Look. How beautiful. They're Catherine's. Why would she... The note. Why wait until it's over? And who knows too late? Enjoy these while you can. Thanks for love and friendship. I'll see you when I see you. Catherine. What does she mean? talk to you alone we're alone now where have you sent her by her i take it you're don't play to... games with me ridley you know who i mean i want to know where you've sent her and why that is not information you have any right to i don't give a damn i want to know what you've done to her and so help me you're going to tell me i'm not going to tell you anything but i suggest you use your undoubted talent for this line of work to put the pieces together for yourself you can do that can't you tom i'm not sure i want to i know the point is, you can, and you should, as an exercise. Is that all it is to you, an exercise? Let's see if you know even the half of it. That message from Paris. They warned you not to send her in, but you went ahead. Why? You know why. Think. Oh, my God. My God. You know it's going to work. That's the worst part, isn't it? That you know. You cold-blooded, murdering bastard. <laughs> Brave words, Tom. Very impressive. I suggest you use them on the Nazis when they march on London, or when they fly their flag from the White House. Fight them with the moral justice of your arguments. Wring your hands until they beg for mercy. Preach your sermons from your ivory tower. Do anything but take up the weapons that will do the job. You call throwing a helpless girl to the Gestapo a weapon? You've seen the logic of it. And once you've seen that, there's no going back. I wouldn't be you, Ridley. Not for a million victories over a million Hitlers. Somebody once said that no great country was ever saved by good men, because good men will never go to the lengths necessary to save it. Don't try and pretend that you are some patriot doing your painful duty. You're a sadist. You're insane. You don't fool me. And you won't fool anybody else when this story is told. Told by you? If necessary. I could have you arrested just for saying that. Then why don't you? Because you'll never do it. You're one of us. You know it. You just won't admit it. But you will. In time. Now, Major, I have work to do. And so have you. Good day. crawling with Gestapo. If they were looking for us, they'd have picked us up already. They want your contacts. Can we make a run for it in Paris? No. There'll be a guard on a run you between trains, even if you don't see it. What do we do? I don't know. I don't understand why. When I leave you in Paris, I'll contact someone I know. I'll try to have them lob the track. Make sure you buy a door and be ready to run. We'll have people looking for you. That man, he's still there. I know. Catherine. Catherine, I love you.
You've got to help me. We have to fix the derailment right now. So 416 to Calais. Four. You don't go around ordering a derailment like you're ordering a beer and a sandwich and a sandwich cafe. I know that. And I know what you think of me. Never mind how I know, but I know. That is not important. All that matters is that there is an agent on that train who's going to be picked up in Calais. I tried to warn London, but I don't know something went wrong. They sent her anyway. What you're saying is there's an agent on her way to Calais who you want stopped? No, it's a Gestapo I want to stop. And how do you happen to know there are Gestapo on that train? Believe me, Stromenberg wants this one. Yes. I believe you, Paul. I believe you would know very well if trauma but once. I do. Northern France. I don't have to tell you the problems that gives us. The one advantage is that nobody would expect us to attack under such conditions. Our forecasters predict the slight improvement overnight, offering a possible window of opportunity in the early hours of tomorrow morning. Gentlemen, it has been decided that the attack on the Normandy beaches will be launched then. Let us pray the enemy believes our lives and continues to anticipate our main invasion force in Calais. We are all now in the hands of God and Colonel Ridley's conjurers. If you leave your name, I will pass on your message. Hello. 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 Who is this?
Ajax had proof against him. Proof! And London wouldn't give us permission. The one who organizes the lies and the flights. Paul! That bastard who betrayed us! Come. Andrea is not available. I'm sure one of our other girls would please you equally. No, no, no. I'm sure you're right. But uh, she's special. If she's busy, I'll wait. She won't be in for some time yet. Do you know anywhere I can get in touch with her? Listen, no offense, but she works here. Only here. Understand? I'm sorry. I'll wait. What would you like while you're waiting? Whiskey? Cognac? A bottle of champagne? No. Yes, of course. Champagne. This is London. Archer. And two coffees with cognac, please. young lady is asking herself where we have met before. It was in a restaurant here in Paris. You were having trouble with a drunken oaf. Lamentably, one of my own men. Happily, I was able to be of service to the young lady. I see that once again you are in need of my help. Where is this young lady in handcuffs? Release her immediately! Oh. Forgive me, mademoiselle, I am surrounded by fools and barbarians. Thank you, no. Something to drink? As you wish. But perhaps you will tell me just how you come to be in the hands of my security services. I was hoping that you might be able to tell me that. <laughs> Very well. You are a serving British officer. You're also a terrorist operating behind enemy lines out of uniform, for which the penalty under the Geneva Convention is death. What would you Germans know about the Geneva Convention? You couldn't even spell it. of character as well as virtue. You should be spared the less attractive aspects of an interrogation in this building. I can offer you that. All I want from you is a few simple, straightforward answers. I want the details of your sabotage plan in Calais. I want the names of your collaborators. And I want the precise timing of the Operation. You know I can't tell you that. <laughs> My dear young lady, there's nothing in that beautiful head of yours that I cannot make you tell me. Nothing. <laughs> yes. I'll be there shortly.
prepare the young lady for a little talk when I return. Yes? This just came in from the Café Plo in Lille. It's from Calais for London. Denise arrested on arrival Calais. Ah, that is useful. Now we know her underground name. Conclusion must be she was betrayed by someone here. Stop. Only contact was Hall, air operations officer. Stop. I'm convinced he is in pay of Gestapo. And request carte blanche to deal with him. Stop. Reply most urgent this channel. Aristide. Carte blanche? They want London's permission to kill him. Shall I throw this away? No, no. No, send it at once. Surely it is better for us if London does not know we have the agent. On the contrary. London's reply to this message is the ultimate proof of how highly they value her. And proof of Paul's loyalty to us. Surely you don't have any doubts about Paul. Well, not serious ones. But any double agent can become a triple agent. If London authorizes his execution for betraying her, we'll know for sure about both of them. I'll have Lil send a message right away. Professionally. So, Denise, you are not a child. <laughs> that much anyone can see. Now, you know where you are and you know what I want. This is your last chance to cooperate. You know I can't do that. Don't make me turn them loose on you. Don't make me do that, please. Is this all she was carrying? Yes, Herr Obersturmanführer. Where's the microfilm with your instructions? You can tell me now, or after they finish pulling out your fingernails one by one. It's uh, your choice. There's no microfilm. This is 17th century Chinese porcelain. It's, uh, it's a work of art. It's unique, priceless. Once destroyed, it cannot be replaced. It will be gone forever like your beauty. Don't make me do the same to you. She's here. Come with me. Andrea, my dear, you've made a conquest. Send some young men. We'll see only you. Another emergency? I have to know something. That last message to London. Did you send it? Of course I did. And did they acknowledge? Yes, like they always do. What? What's wrong? Listen to me. When I was sitting down there, waiting for you, I asked myself over and over why, when they knew it was a trap. Why send her? Why? There was only one answer. It was what they wanted, what they planned. They want her caught and tortured until she tells whatever it is she has to tell. 
That's how they are going to do it. Dear God, it has to be. That's how they are going to do it. I don't understand. But I won't let it happen. I won't! Please, just tell me. What have they done? For God's sake! There is no difference. No difference between them. None. I'm very sorry, Freddy. Should have authorized carte blanche when Ajax requested it. This would never have happened. So, I have your authority now to radio them to go ahead. Yes, of course. I don't think you need me. Wait, Tom. What would you think if I told you that Paul worked for me? Always has done. I wouldn't believe you. It's perfectly true. I could prove it, if you insist. Then why have you just condemned him to death? I was hoping you could tell me that. After all, you're the conjurer's apprentice, aren't you, Tom? You're beginning to understand the way these things work around here. So why have I just condemned another of my own agents to death? Because the radio in Leo is under German control. Which means they've read the message about Paul and will read your reply. If you don't give carte blanche on Paul, they'll know he's one of ours. If you do give it, they'll see how disturbed you are that he's handed Catherine to them. And they'll believe every word they torture out of her. You know, you're going to be among the very best in our profession. <sighs> Damn you, Ridley. You're trying to make me as guilty as you are. That's what you want, isn't it? Somebody to share the crime? But I'm not going to. You're on your own, Ridley. You poor man. You can still go after Cavendish. Save the life of an honest and brave man. Don't you think you should? But you can't do it, can you? Because you've seen the logic. And when you've seen the logic, then you have to follow it. If Paul lives, Catherine stays where she is, but they won't believe what she tells them. So her sacrifice will be for nothing. But if Paul dies, that's all that matters now, isn't it? That it should not all be for nothing. One more life to save millions. You've got to bring me in. They're going to kill me. Yes, I know. London has authorized carte blanche. Where are you? Cherche midi. Beyond the corner of Jean Ferrandi in 20 minutes. I'll have a car there. Listen to me. The woman. Have you got her? You mean Denise? Yes, yeah, she's here. Please wait. Wait for me. There is something I have to tell you. I know what's going on. Don't hurt her. Whatever you say, Paul. The invasion force, gentlemen, set sail for Normandy at 1800 hours yesterday. Our main assault troops will be on the beaches sometime after 0400 hours today. Aerial bombardment will begin ahead of that time. We can do little now but wish Godspeed to those brave men and pray for victory. Listen to me, you foolish young woman. This can go on forever. You won't die until we choose. You won't even lose consciousness for very long. So far, this is nothing compared to the pain that we can inflict on you if we continue. Now, once more, 
Will you cooperate? Yes, Herr General. Indeed, Herr General, I understand. The invasion has begun. Normandy. Chiefs of staff are mobilizing every available fighting man towards Normandy, unless they have any reason to believe that this present attack is merely a diversion. There's no more time. We must have the truth from her now. My friend, he worked for me, your precious Paul. He gave you to us because I told him to. <laughs> he lied well, didn't he? But not well enough. Your terrorist friends in the resistance killed him because of what he did to you. Now, will you tell me all you know?
few seconds missing, it's all over. A few seconds missing, it's all over. There is a microfilm, isn't there? This is all we found. Where is it? This, yeah? No? The matches? Which one? Mark? What Mark? Oh. There we are. Well, you see how easy that was? How much easier it could have been? Just one more thing. Your friends in Calais, who were you supposed to meet there? Wish to my Führer. The main invasion is to be on Pas de Calais in 48 hours time. They've sabotaged the main fuse in the Littman battery. They're planning a surge of electrical power. It's all timed by a coded message on the BBC. Get me Field Marshal von Rundstedt, at once.
It's worked. We have confirmation from all sectors. The Germans have moved every available man and piece of equipment up to Calais. Our troops have gained a foothold on the Normandy beaches and are pushing inland. There's every likelihood we shall succeed. Now you better get packed. I'm not coming to Paris. What do you mean you're not? Are you sick? This is what we've been waiting for. Well, I don't think you'll want me to come when I've told you what I have to. What are you talking about? I'm Henry Ridley's niece. He arranged everything from the start. He said it was vital he knew what you were up to behind his back. Who you spoke to, who you saw. Especially Catherine and any of your people from Washington. At first, I thought we'd just be friends and it wouldn't be so bad. I didn't mean to fall in love with you. I really didn't. I'm sorry. There's a report of a woman in Ravensbrook. They say she was taken from here. They're not sure, but they think she's about the right age.
Catherine! Catherine. Catherine, look at me. At least listen to me. I haven't got any excuses. Anything except... Except to tell you that Paul loved you. He worked for us. Not Stromelberg. He was a hero. He loved you. Deception is the name of the game over on the movie channel 2 at 10. Goldie Horn is the one deceived. Here on Sky 1 in Alien Nation, there's a little lost lamb to be taken care of, and Sykes steps in to play shepherd. 